Hey, welcome to Easy Nursing, the channel that's dedicated to bringing you NCLEX reviews, general nursing tips, and practice question videos. Today we're going to be talking about Cushing's disease, and we're going to be doing some NCLEX practice. Real quick, what is Cushing's disease? Well, this is where the adrenal glands aren't producing enough of their hormones, and so these hormones inv include uh, steroids, it includes uh, aldosterone, which helps the body to maintain its fluid and salt levels, and not enough androgens, which are the sex hormones. Cushing's is opposite of Addison's disease, which is going to be not enough of those hormones. So let's get started with some practice questions. Which disease puts a patient at highest risk for fluid overload? So we see Addison's and Cushing's. Well, first off the bat, just remember that these are opposites. If this said puts a patient at risk for fluid imbalance, both of these, but these put them at different type of fluid imbalance. Cushing's disease is going to be too much aldosterone produced by the adrenal glands. And aldosterone works by telling the body to absorb or to hold on to salt and water because water and salt typically stay together. So if Cushing's, you're going to hold on to salt and water. So this would be the answer, but let's cover the other. So here's the answer. You can see that Cushing's puts them at risk for fluid overload. But what are these others? Addison's disease. Well, Addison's disease is the opposite. So not enough aldosterone. You can't hold on to salt. You can't hold on to water and you're extremely dehydrated. So what is this adrenal insufficiency? Well, let's break that down. We have adrenal, which is, means the adrenal glands, just like Addison's and Cushing's, insufficiency. So it's insufficiently producing its hormones. When you see adrenal insufficiency, it's the same thing as Addison's disease. So that's another way you know it's neither of these two. And diabetes, uh, diabetes mellitus, this has to do with uh, being, when we say diabetic, there's really two types of diabetes, but this is dealing with blood sugars. And I would be more likely to see a diabetic be at risk for dehydration because when you have lots of sugar in the body, kidneys start expelling the sugar in your urine, and so you're losing sugar and water. So the answer we'll be looking for is Cushing's. So just to recap, Addison's disease, which is shown here, is going to be a low aldosterone, low cortisol, which is a stress hormone, so not enough adrenal gland hormones. And these are the adrenal glands here. So adrenal insufficiency, adren uh, Addison's disease, same disease. Cushing syndrome. You can see here that you're holding on to sodium and fluid retention because you have too much aldosterone. So it puts them at risk of fluid overload. Look how swollen he is. And diabetes is just checking your blood sugars, diabetes mellitus, checking your blood sugars, and you're not at risk of fluid overload with this on its own. So once again, for this problem, the answer is going to be Cushing's disease. Let's take a look at the next one. All right, which abnormal serum lab value is expected for a patient with Cushing's? So we're looking for, for at a patient with Cushing's disease, and what is an abnormal value that is related to Cushing's is what this is asking us. So what uh, labs are thrown off with Cushing's disease? All right, so uh, let's go ahead and take a look at this. Remember I told you about aldosterone. Aldosterone tells the body, hold on to salt, hold on to water. And with Cushing's, you have too much aldosterone as well as cortisol and androgens. So you can see this is aldosterone here, and he is hol uh, holding on to this salt. And so we're going to see a high salt level. Now, this is where you need to practice your lab values. You can see the normal salts, 135 to 145. So this would be an elevated salt level, which would be typical of Cushing. So that's going to be our answer. What are these others here? Uh, potassium 5.8. Normal would be 3.5 to 5.0. So this would be a high potassium. This isn't going to be your answer, though, uh, because you're going to have a low potassium. Remember I told you aldosterone holds on the salt? In order to hold on to the salt, he's got to expel potassium. So you're gonna have a low potassium in Cushing's. If this was a question about Addison's disease, however, it would be the opposite. So you'd have a high potassium and a low sodium. BUN has to do with the kidney function. Um, we're not worried about that. And a low glucose you won't see in Cushing's. Uh, with Cushing's, you have high stress hormones, high cortisol. And with stress, your blood sugars rise. And a glucose of 65 
would be considered uh, slightly on the low end. And so this would not be normal of Cushing's. You would expect a low blood sugar when you have low stress levels, such as in Addison's disease. So to recap, Cushing's disease has high levels of aldosterone, which holds on to sodium. Let's do one more. The patient with Cushing's disease is at risk for developing which of the following? All right, well, we got a couple labs here. Let's take a look at these labs. So we're talking about Cushing's, and they're at risk for having which of the following? Well, we told you that they're at risk for having a high salt level because they're holding on to aldosterone. Well, this says low salt, so that is not one of our answers. High potassium. All right, we told you if you hold on the salt, expel potassium. So they would have a low potassium, so that is incorrect. Hyperglycemia, high blood sugars. This is expected because with Cushing's, you have high cortisol, the stress hormone, which is releasing sugar to fuel the flight or flight reflex. So this will be one of our answers. Now, what do you think about when you have high blood sugars? Well, uh, not to confuse you with the question earlier about diabetics, but with high blood sugars, just in general, it puts you at risk for poor wound healing. And this is because uh, two reasons. One, the sugars in the blood can feel bacteria which want to grow in, in, on your wound and your wound won't heal properly. And also, it, it, it can kind of clot off some of the capillaries a little bit. Uh, it's just slower moving. And remember I told you about how bacteria like, blood, uh, like sugar? Well, look at this. It puts you at risk for infection. So a patient with Cushing's has high aldosterone, which would give them a high sodium and a low potassium, and they have high stress hormone, which would give them a high glucose and risk for poor wound healing and infection. Let's look at this diagram just to re review real quick. Here you can see this is a Cushing's patient, typical by the very wide abdomen, thin extremities, holding on the fluids and the fat, so you got moon face and a hump. And you'll see here poor wound healing is going to be uh, one of the issues that they'll have to deal with. So for this problem, to select all that, you uh, select all that apply. The correct answer is going to be infections, poor wound healing, and hyperglycemia in the Cushing's patient. Hey, if you like this video, please subscribe to Easy Nursing. If you want more on Cushing's disease, I have a whole video that goes just over Cushing's versus Addison's. And if you like it, like I said, subscribe. And this is me. I'll be making more videos for you. So thanks for watching.